<laughs> oh my goodness. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We had some huge te technical difficulties this morning. So you probably are on another live. I canceled it and I started again. So if you are available, please tune in. Good morning. Let me know that you are here. We got the victory. We got the victory. Yes. Good morning. Welcome to Social Faith. Where we do what? Where we faith it to make it. We ride out situations and circumstances. And please believe, please believe that we're going to continue this morning. Yay! Good morning, Denise. You found me. Good, 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 good. Come on in, like, and share. Welcome to Social Faith. Come on in, like, and share. Let other folk know who you know that usually watch. Tag them and let them know we are on. We had a couple of little difficulties, but we're moving forward. So we're going to take a few seconds and hope that everybody comes on. How are you this morning? Yay, 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 yay. I was having some difficulties, y'all, but I got the victory. Yay, yay, yay. We standing on promises. What do we do when things happen? We Faith it. I believe God that you guys would find me. <laughs> we faith it to make it. We're talking about building blocks. My team, thank you so much for all your help. We're coming on live. We're coming on strong. I canceled my original event notice. Um, it was having some problems and I just did it really quickly all over again. And um, that's just what life is doing. While we are life and things happen, and we keep moving, we keep doing what we are supposed to be doing. Thank you so much. We love you here on Social Faith. If you miss any of our, if you miss any of our sessions, you can always catch us up on Barbara Hunter YouTube Live. Social Faith, Barbara Hunter on Social Faith YouTube Live. God bless you. God bless you. Please sign in again. Please sign in again. Sign in again. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm texting a few people telling them to sign in again. Yeah, so how was your week? Did you have a great week? Did you have a great week? Did you have a great week? I don't know how to. I guess they'll just have to watch the replay. Um, as I don't know how to alert people to sign in again, sign in again. Okay, good. So we were talking about building blocks. And last week, I want everybody to know, thank you for your prayers. My brother is doing well. We just had to get him to get some, some, some checkups. And so since it's his business, I won't go into details. And with me, it would be different, but all is well. Good morning. Good morning. Come on in. Good morning, everyone. I give all glory and honor to God for you to be able to find us again. We have canceled the original because it just wasn't working like it was supposed to. But I give all glory and honor to God. That's the only person who will be glorified this morning because he is a good God. Good morning, everyone. We are talking about building blocks because this year we are working on some things and we are doing some things. And I said at the very beginning of our conversation that building in building blocks that time and change are two things <clears throat> excuse me that are out of our personal control but how we manage those two things is within our control so let's become professionals at managing time and professionals at managing change and so we spoke last week before we talked about uh, faith blocks we talked about relationships and this we we talked about spiritual blocks and now we're talking about faith we're talking about faith to do whatever we are going to need to do this year yay glow you made it thank you come on in we're talking about whatever we need to do this year we've got to be built up in our faith we have to have the blocks of our faith faith cemented 
set in place because it's not going to be as if we're just going to walk through and somebody's going to open the door and we're going to have what we say we have and all of that. No, we are going to have to go about this thing with a true resilience, with a true vengeance about accomplishing what we believe God placed in our hearts. And so last week, when I was talking about Matthew 7 and 7, we talked about ask, seek, and knock. And I'm not changing the reference of the scripture because the reference of the scripture is what it is. It is telling us to ask and seek those things and knock for those things. But I am also saying along with that, we have to build our faith by prioritizing our time with God. By prioritizing our time with God, when we are asking, we want to be asking the presence of God. We want, because see, that's where our development takes place. When we look at Matthew chapter 7, it starts out with Jesus saying, look, don't be judgy. Don't be judgy. Let me handle my business. I could deal with whatever an individual is going through. I am the one that will be doing the judging. And then he goes on in, in, in verse number three in Matthew chapter seven, and he tells us, be self-reflective. Don't be looking at what's going on in somebody else's life or with somebody else's um, situation. Look at your own stuff. You know, he's telling us, don't be all in somebody else's stuff. Focus on you. So he tells them in that, he says, look at the speck in your eye. Don't be hypocritical. Jesus is talking to his followers. He's talking to you and I. So he's saying to us, look, check yourself out. Take the time out so that you can build your faith. And how do we do that? Then he goes on in the verse six and he says, listen, he's teaching his disciples, discern who you are trying to correct. Because some folk are like dogs and swine. Some folks are just going to do what they want to do. And so you like wasting your time. So it, when it says, don't give your pearls to the swine or, or to the dogs, do not give dogs what is sacred. Um, it, what, what he's saying is monitor how much time you spend on trying to change folk that you are not able to change. Use that time on ourselves. Use that time on reflecting and building our own lives because we have responsibility for ourselves. So that's when he comes to verse seven and he leaves that, all of that is about self-reflection. All of that is about focusing on helping our own selves to be better. This year should be about helping you be better, be at your best, do whatever it takes to accomplish what you need to accomplish so that you can be better for everyone else that you love, that you care for, so we can be this light in this really, really, really dark, dark world, so that we can be these prayer intercessors and these warriors. Well, all of that happens, good people, in the presence of God. All of that happens. So when we ask, we're talking about prioritizing ourselves in God's presence. Asking Jesus, what about me, Lord, do I need to deal with? What's in my heart? Who have I not forgiven? What is it that I am still allowing to be a thorn in my side? Ask about those personal things because when we're following the line of scripture, you know, we're following the flow of what Jesus is telling to his people, which would be us. And then seek, seek information on what we've asked. Seek information on how we do these improvements, how we get ourselves to be at this place because it is in the presence of God it is in the presence of God that we learn how to do three things. It's in the presence of God when we learn what yes looks like to those things that we are requesting. It's in the presence of God when we learn what no looks like about what we're asking for. And it is in the presence of God how we learn how to wait. Because we are under development. You know, the fruit, the fruit of the spirit, we talked about it. Our fruit is being developed and it is developed in God's presence by life, by the things that we do, by the jobs that we work on, by the people that we are married to, by the people that we parent, by the people that we love and we associate with. 
It is done in God's presence. So we are asking God today. We are asking him to delve into our own hearts, to look into our own motivations and help us to receive and to see what he's already sealed us with. The Bible says we've been sealed by Holy Spirit unto that day. We already have the plan of God for our lives, but the manifestation and the understanding of what that looks like and how we are about to, how we are able to go about achieving that is going to come with us asking and seeking and then knocking. Knocking is just all out. God, I just want you. I just want you because like a deer panthers for the water. So my soul cries out for you, Lord, because warning God on this level, he's able to manifest all of the things that he's already, we've been predestined. He's already prepaid for. He's already given and delivered us, but we've got to make it a point to get in God's presence. Not for the stuff, but just God. See, Moses knew the ways of God, the Bible says. We want God's ways. The people knew God's hand. We already know God's hand. God's hand drew us into his loving salvation. God's hand drew us. So when we, 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 we drew us to this morning on this social faith, so we want to understand God's ways. So when we knock, the door of the presence of God opens. And he calls it a door because he wants to open it up for us. It didn't say the wall because walls don't have doors. But when Jesus opens the door, that's our opportunity to just go in and become and be all that he has called us to become and be. To get prepared in his presence prepares us for whatever it is that's happening that's happening in our own personal lives. Be a little selfish as we proceed in this year. We on this third day of February. Be a little dependent on the presence of God, dependent on his guidance and directions. We can't figure it out, people. We don't know how to fix it. But in God's presence, in the presence of God, knocking on his door just for him to come. That's all we want, Jesus. We want you, Lord. We want you. We want you and we trust you to conform in us the transformation that we need so that we are not conformed to this world, but we are transformed by the renewing of our minds. And that happens for us, dear. That happens to us in the presence of God. We're going through some difficult times right now. While we are out here lifing and people are peopling, people are doing some really hard things here in Miami, because we are from different places um, this morning, but here in Miami, we had the most tragic event on yesterday. That whatever state this mom was in, that she harmed herself, you know, she jumped off a bridge been praying for her. I'm sure you guys who are here know about that. We've been praying for her because something became in life too hard and she hadn't figured out where to go or how to find help and social issues, emotional issues, physical issues had become too heavy. And one day she was on the scene and one day she wasn't. And people called her normal, people called her well, people called her good, and she probably was. But something triggered. And so that's why we have to get in the presence of God. That's why we have to get before God. She had two young twins, she had twins, two young babies that were found not alive in her van. These are things that happen to us in this dark, dark world. See, we have a release. We have Lord Jesus. And so I'm saying that we need to spend our time asking for his presence. We, we need to spend our time seeking him and, and what he wants in our lives today. And then it, we have to be able to. We have to be able to be developed in his presence. 
It's a hard thing hearing that story on yesterday. But God wants for us to be developed and prepared for what he has for us. So we'll have great families. We'll raise great children. We'll have great businesses because we go on before the presence of God. And he's told us who should be our partners. We discern who should be working along with us. We got information. We're bigger than social media. We use social media. We don't allow social media to use us, to vent, to do all kinds of things that are out in the world forever. We strive for clarity in our lives. That's what we're seeking. We're seeking clarity and direction and guidance from our dear Lord. See, we want God to be the signer on the things that we're going after. We want to be the co-signer. I'm going to say it again. We want God to sign off on the things that we're saying that God has called us to do or the people he, he, he's put together in our lives, uh, the families we want to raise. We want God's signature on that. We want to co-sign. Because in my life, I've, I've done a lot of signing that's ended me up in all kinds of complications and situations, and it all has worked together for my good. But there are many of you who don't have to. You can start out, you can start out with God making decisions on your behalf, and you just co-signing on what God has already said in his word, and then you don't have to have all of this other stuff working together, because it all does really, no matter what we've gone through and what we will go through, it all really does work together for our good because we love the Lord and we are called to his purpose. But it's just some things that we don't have to have the experience of if we allow God. If we be if we're willing to to go when he says yes, when we have that green light. And then we're willing to stop when he says no and just continue to do what we're doing. Or we're willing just willing to to wait. And when he says no, we, we got to find the plans for what he really wants us to do. But when he says wait, we can continue on in doing what we're presently doing, rather, so that we can come up and be what God has called us to be in this dark world. We want to be the light. We want to shine bright. We want to be the light that the world can see that this little girl from Liberty City or from wherever you are grew up and trust God put her life in his hands to believe God and even with the pain and even with hard times still holding on to God's unchanging hand because he is good he's always good he's always God and so this season of our lives number one it's about building yourself mm -hmm. it's about focusing on you it's about seeking God's presence not his hand, his presence. Because in his presence, Solomon found out. Solomon found out. We talked about it a week or so ago. All he asked was for God's wisdom, and God did it for him. He gave him his wisdom, but not only his wisdom. He gave him everything else Solomon could ever need it, and anybody else that was connecting with Solomon was blessed because of it. So as we continue, let's take a minute and go to Hebrew chapter 10. Let's look at this for a second. Thank you for finding me. Thank you for coming on. And those of you who were on last week and you came on late, thank you for praying for my brother. He's doing very well. And um, thank you for continuing to keep us in your prayers. Hebrews chapter 10. Let's look at verse number, what did I say? 22. Here we go. It says, let us draw near to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. I little tears in my eyes here. Just love the Lord. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart or a committed heart or a surrendered heart. And with the full assurance that faith brings, with the full assurance that faith brings, faith, faith in God, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us, <coughs> to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. That's because of our faith in God, because of us being born again, 
because of our being made righteous through the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Let us hold, get this, I'm reading NIV version. Verse 23, let us hold unswervingly. No matter what life brings, let us hold unswervingly. Do not be moved off of the word that God has given, no matter how long it takes, no matter what life is looking at. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. For he who promised is faithful. What did he promise? What did God promise us as a body of his people? But what did God promise you personally? What did God say to you personally? What has God said to you that you have not seen yet, but you will hold on unswervingly? You will hold on beyond the doctor report. You will hold on beyond the lawyers, the attorneys. You will hold on beyond the banks. You will hold on beyond the person who wants to do what he said, opposite of what he said in your life. But you will hold on to this word, this good word of God. You will hold on to this unswervingly, knowing that he can not lie. He swore by himself. Whatever he said to you this morning, don't let go. Get in his presence. Let him know how much you love, how much you care. Let him know that you believe and you trust and you will not let go. I'm not letting go. I got too much that I know that God has prepared for me. And you have too much that God has prepared for you. Hold on. Don't let go. Faith it to make it. One more scripture. And I'm going to let you go. I know you got things planned this morning. One more scripture. Let's go to Psalm. The book of Psalms. Psalm 119. And I want to look at verse 30 through Psalm 119, 119. Let's go down here. It's 150 of these guys. You, you can go here anytime when you need to be built up. Verse 30 says, I have chosen in the way of faithfulness. I have set my heart on your laws. I hold fast to your statutes, Lord. Do not let me be put to shame. I have been in this word now more than half of my life. I didn't start out. I started out late. Unlike so many of you who started out early, which is so good, but it's never too late. And with this, I have never seen the righteous forsaken who held on to the word of God. I have a dear friend who celebrated her 71st birthday, Carol Weech. And I watched her go through a season that the biggest and the bad of us, baddest of us would not have made it through as she fought through cancer. But I watched the word be produced in her to life. And I watched her ring the proverbial bell that they have in the hospital, but it was a louder bell that was ringing as the angels in heaven were rejoicing. And she held on to the word of God in her faith to be healed for a second and a third and a fourth time of attack. See, this is, this is the kind of stuff that makes this make sense for me. So when you watch people's lives who profess, who unswervingly hold on to God's word, you too get an opportunity to be that for someone else. Because I watched her. Through the pain, through the suffering, and I'm saying to you through your pain this morning, I'm saying to you through your suffering this morning, I'm saying through you, Th through your testimony this morning, hold on to the word of God. 
Start where you are in this word and grab hold of this word and do not let go. Spend time in the word of God. You, you got to have this word treaded out for you. You know, you got to have understanding from this word. So you got to be connected to a word teaching church. You got to be connected to a church where the scriptures are being made clear, line upon line and precept upon precept. And because you've been in the presence of God, not asking and seeking and knocking, when you sit on whatever your chairs are in front of your man or woman of God, they are going to say something. God's going to put it in them for you that makes clarity come to you, hallelujah, and you will sit there and you will be amazed because you know you were studying that, you know that that's the situation that you're in. If that's not happening for you, you might not be where you need to be, but when the word that you have been holding on to and the word that you need an understanding for, and you've got pastors that they end up teaching and preaching or just saying something in exhortation that exemplifies the word that you are hearing and seeking clarity on, then you are somewhere to happen. You are somewhere to happen. So, yes, I love social faith. And I love uh, podcasts and all those kinds of things. But baby, I'm telling you this morning, in seeking God to be empowered to go or not to go or just to wait, you got to have this word on the inside of you. That's our building block. So our prayer life builds our faith. The word of God builds our faith so that we can face it, so that we can make it. So we want to make sure that nothing separates us. Because further on in um, Hebrews, it tells us, for, for, forsake not the gathering together. Forsake not coming together. You know, COVID, COVID started something that God allowed. Yeah, he, he allowed it or it wouldn't happen. COVID started something that God allowed. And I think we better always have some 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 type of online streaming, some kind of activities, because people who couldn't come out before COVID had a chance to be feeling involved again. They had a chance to get connected again. And people who would have never, ever thought about being in the faith had an opportunity to be visible in your city, your town, wherever you are, to be able to get connected. So we're glad for the fact that we can stream, but you need to touch somebody. You need to be in the presence you need to be comfortable. You need to, to have a teaching ministry so that you can continue this word of God. So let's go a little further as we believe in faith, what God has placed in our hearts to do, because it's already done. We're predestined. It's already mapped out for us, but we got to get divine instruction so we can accomplish what it is that God has called us to accomplish. I have to deeply apologize for whatever was going on with my setup this morning. But I'm so glad that many of you found me or will find me in the replay. We believe that we hear from God and we want to share what God is saying. And that's what it is. He says, you need more of me. You need more of God. When I say me, I'm talking about God. God said, you need more of me. Um, me, I'm just the vessel. But praise be to God. Praise be to God. Hold fast. Be encouraged. And I promise I'm going to get this right next week. <laughs> but if, it, if, if, it, if something else happens, believe me, I'm going to make it work. God bless you. We love you so much. And um, remember, leave it to Jesus. Let him judge. Remember, let's do some self-reflection. This year is about us getting us together. Yeah, us being better for this world. So that this our lights can shine. So that we can reach and attain some of the things that are in your heart. And some of you have some big dreams that you got to get to moving on. You just got to start moving towards those dreams. You take those steps that God has already signed off on. You take those steps to achieve what it is that God has already told you he wants to see you doing. Take one step at a time. God bless you. We love you. And remember, what do we do on social faith? We face it to make it. Have an awesome rest of the day. God bless you.